Hey, it's Robert Wallace. I'm uh, back on the scene. I want to give you some more information that's going to help you manifest whatever it is that you want in life. Uh, and that is going to come down to uh, several things. Now, of course, I've given out tips and tricks and all this stuff along the way, and I will continue to do so. Uh, but I'm going to angle this a little bit differently. Now, this is what I'm calling uh, secrets to the law of attraction. Now, the first thing I want to state is that I use this term law of attraction. It's a buzzword. Everybody's heard it. We all know what it means. Uh, basically, you think you get it basically uh, through your expectation. But what it really is to the vast majority of us, uh, it's prayer. What you pray about, you bring about. Ask, believe, and you will receive. And it's vital that you understand that because if you don't see how you can link this or you can uh, tie this in with your faith, you might go astray. In fact, you will go astray. Uh, you're going to start uh, trying to use magic to pull things in instead of using a simple dialogue and improving your relationship with God in order to give you what he's already said he's going to give you. And so you, we don't need to use these subversive means in order to do that. We need to understand what our religion says about it. And then we need to uh, take our understanding Find and see if it's true in our scriptures. Make sure we're not trying to apply some kind of witchcraft into our practice. And if we can find it in there, uh, you know, maybe it'll enhance your your faith in what was written. Unfortunately, instead of you know getting the faith from the book, we kind of got to we go out here and then we verify that. And we're like, oh, the book is true. And you know, for a lot of people, including myself, a little bit of a doubting Thomas. You know, I'm surprised at how much I learned outside of the Bible before I came back to the Bible for instance, and realize that it was all written in there. And I've seen it written into many different religions for that matter. So I'm, a, I'm partial, but you should know uh, if you are a spiritual person that your spiritual book can take care of you uh, when it comes to understanding prayer, you know, the law of attraction, and faith. Um, desire and wanting. It's one thing to want something. It's another thing. Uh, to desire it, for instance, um, you know, God gives us the desires of our heart. But at the same time, now, and that's great to have desires, to have plans, okay? And then there's also the wanting. And the wanting to me sort of insinuates a needing of, for a thing to be so. So we're kind of grasping and we're reaching and we're never satisfied uh, until a thing happens. So uh, the reason why I'm making that contrast is because it's one thing to know what you want, and to make a request and to believe that you've received it and it's another thing to believe that it's another thing to believe that you have uh, it's another thing to believe that you have a need uh, which has yet to be fulfilled and the problem with this is you are not lacking of anything to begin with and if you're feeling a lack it's because you're not holding the object of your desire in the right frame of mind in fact you're holding it beyond out of your touch as though it were bigger and greater than God so that it could not come to you or that there is something that's between you but a desire has no problem manifesting uh, but a wanting will continue to remain a wanting until you become content with it being as it is as soon as you're content with the thing being as it is, whether it is the way you want it to be or otherwise, then you really loosen up or clear the road for it to come in. Before then, though, it's like having a, it's having a bunch of signs on the road uh, that say, hey, wait, no more people come in until this thing happens. And what really needs to happen is let everything flow, everything go as is. And let's say I, I'm trying to manifest a car and, you know, somebody tries to give me a, a matchbox car. You know, I could say, no, don't give me that. Afraid that that might equal my attraction. That might equal what I've prayed for. Oh, it was confused and now I've received less. So if I don't receive that, then I, and I hold out, then the big thing will come. No, this is about letting everything come. You know, I see a sign with a car. Yes, I see a little matchbox car. Yes, and these are signs that, you know, I'm in the flow. I'm on to something. I'm being heard, you know, and they get, you know, it can get bigger and clearer and clearer until it manifests. Uh, and so along the way, you need to be grateful. You need to be uh, expectant. Uh, 
and you need to be uh, just patient with what's happening, letting everything come in, because everything's got a role to play in your uh, in your manifest in your life, and that's huge. And uh, cross intentions. Uh, this counter intentions, cross intentions, that's saying one thing and then believing the opposite. And, uh, and you know, we can't emphasize things like this enough because it goes right back into doubting. If you're not getting something, it's probably because you're believing against it. You have a doubt that it can manifest, a doubt that it will manifest, a doubt that you're worthy of it, a doubt that you're being heard or not. And those sorts of thoughts, uh, you cannot, you should not give voice to, A, um, you should not give mind to or attention to B, uh, and then, you know, and up into that level, once you start suppressing and not even so much suppressing as in resisting, but suppressing as in, uh, not continuing in it, uh, then it's, it, it's appearances are far less until they disappear until you think a thought and you just automatically move right into expectation or automatically and if it, it's not going to be something that you want to expect then you might move automatically right into repentance and say god please forgive me you know for that or you know or they may use that as the contrast to say oh i i've just thought a negative thing what's the exact opposite oh it's this thing let me just pray for that you know and so that'll help us to move on and actually get the result that we do desire so um there's three more secrets to the law of attraction for you. Uh, I say secrets. None of this is really a secret. It's all been written for thousands of years and, you know, nearly every religion. Uh, but it hasn't been taught to the general public as in the 21st century of the United States, you know, specifically, you know, not maybe not Eastern culture with this more philosophy and things and maybe a more of an understanding. But anybody who's lacking what they desire, there's a lack of understanding. And this sort of information isn't, uh, isn't as widely propagated as you think, even though the secret and the law of attraction is blown up in the last few years. Uh, it's, it's still information that's very scarce. Even if it's not scarce for you, it's scarce for your neighbor. It's scarce for that man downstairs. It's scarce for that, you know, that man you just passed in the street. So uh, value this information, apply this information, get the results, and then propag teach it. Teach it to other people. All right. Thanks. Bye. Christian consciousness, metaphysics, mind, body, spirit. Getting to the bottom of our meta history. The new Precept video blog.